we're going to start off the JRS session with the, uh, with the paper that won the Troutman uh, Award this year, uh, Carla Medeiros. Uh, and uh, the, the Troutman Award, for those of you who don't know, is uh, given annually uh, thanks to a, a generous gift many years ago by uh, Professor Troutman, specifically uh, for a scientist uh, 45 years or younger uh, who has contributed uh, greatly to the field of refractive surgery, been the lead author uh, in a paper uh, in the Journal of Refractive Surgery in the year prior. Uh, so this year we have Carla Medeiros, uh, who uh, is from Brazil, did her residency uh, and her uh, PhD training in Brazil, did her <coughs> excuse me research fellowship at the Cole Eye Institute, the Cleveland Clinic, which is where I am now, but was not whenever uh, she uh, did this work and published the paper she got out right before I arrived, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to turn it over to her, and she's going to present uh, her groundbreaking work that we published this year in JRS. Thank you, Dr. Randman, and good afternoon. I'm gonna present my study about corneal nerves, injury and regeneration after PRK and mitomycin C use. I have no financial disclosures in this presentation. The late 80s was marked by a new era in refractive surgery with the use of axiomer laser. PRK was the tech, the the, the primary technique correcting refractive errors on cornea surface. Later, lamellar surgeries were implemented. LASIK is still the most popular technique, and more recent, SMILE is another lamellar technique. But despite the evolution of technology, the occurrence of complications such as ectasia after LASIK or even after SMILE LASIK-induced dry eye syndrome and a superior difficulty of retreatment after smiles, smile are examples that turn PRK the technique of choice in some case even nowadays. But unfortunately, it's not free of complications either. Like in the past, the high frequency of corneal haze and it was exactly in this scenario that the advent of mitomycin C has occurred, decreasing the incidence of corneal haze. However, studies revealed greater keratocyte apoptosis after the use of mitomycin C on anterior stroma. And despite the cytotoxic effect of mitomycin C is widely known, its possible neurotoxic effect continue to be not completely understood. Although there are several reports in literature demonstrating the neurotoxic effect of mitomycin C on peripheral nerves, including ocular tissues, such as optic nerve. That's when we used PRK as a model to investigate the effect of mitomycin C use, as well as the isolated harmful potential of axiomer laser on cornea innervation in their regenerative process. So we used rabbit eyes and we performed manual epithelial scrape or a nine diopter PRK with or without mitomycin C use. Then, Acetylcholine acetylcholinesterase or beta-3 tubulin was used to stain the corneal nerves. And the corneas was, were imaged using a sterile microscope and a confocal microscope. And subsequently, the automatic quantification of the corneal nerve area with a software named Image Pro. And later, statistical analysis was done. And this study showed us that both PRK and manual epithelium scrape impact the corneal nerve population after the first day of the procedure when compared to control eyes. 
and as expected, PRK nerve damage is more expressive than epithelial removal, injuring bigger and deeper nerve trunks. We may also see that the use of mitomycin C after PRK caused a superior injury on the nerve population when compared to PRK alone after the first day of the procedure. However, this neurotoxic effect does not persist after the first month, where the absolute amount of corneal nerves after PRK with or without mitomycin C showed no significant difference. That means that the mitomycin C neurotoxic effect on cornea is immediately an early effect. At this point, it is also possible to see a recovery process that increases progressively until the third month, where the absolute amount of nerves restored on cornea showed no longer significant difference from control-wise. And at six months, the central corneal nerve area is no significant difference from an inundated cornea or a three-month PRK cornea, but is still a distinct morphology and nerve distribution when compared to a control wife. Left column represents a normal morphology and nerve distribution layer by layer, different from, in the right, a one-day PRK cornea. Observe that there is a nerve fiber damage beyond the optical zone, represented by the white circle. Thus, PRK cause a retrogradely axonal death phenomenon. Once there is a nerve fiber damage retrogradely beyond the treatment area. In extension, as we can see at the level of anterior stroma and subbasal plexus, as in depth, as we can observe at the level of medium stroma, injuring the nerves beneath the programmed ablation. This movie allows us to compare a normal cornea innervation to a one-day PRK cornea. Observe the nerve damage from fine and delicate epithelial fibers to deepest and thickest nerve trunks in the medium stroma. At the first month, there is already an attempt to, re to recover the innervation. And note the aberrant morphology of nascent nerves after the first month after PRK at the level of medium stroma. Observe the, the distinguished morphology and the aberrant morphology of the fibers with multiple branches, very different from a control cornea at the same depth. And further, at the level of intraepithelial fibers and subbasal plexus, there is a tendency of the nerves to grow perpendicularly to the edge of the wound. This neuronal regeneration behavior was already described in literature by Roja. And despite in using other corneal surgical mechanisms, our study has shown a similar neural remodeling process. This, this study showed us that the neural remodeling process for after a corneal surge collision happens in a biphasic manner, being the first phase, an immature attempt to restore the nerves with the formation of primitive fibers, also called neurites, that occurs in a disorganized manner perpendicular to the edge of the wound. There is a period where the two phases overlap, and the second phase understands the degeneration of neurites and the absorption of axonal traces, and the formation of new definitive nerves in an oblique arrangement. Observe, after the first month, a primary attempt to repopulate the cornea mainly concentrated in the area corresponding to the optical zone, highlighting the unusual distribution in nerve morphology following PRK. 
At the second month, there is a period where the two phases overlap. And observe that there is the degeneration of neurites that first try to repopulate the cornea after the first month and the absorption of the axonal traces at the level of medial stroma at this, after the second month. Observe the morphological change two months following PRK compared to a control cornea. And at the third month, it is possible to recognize findings of the second phase of regeneration neuroregeneration, highlighting the oblique arrangement of the new nerves more similar to an untreated cornea. And at the level of the anterior stroma, observe the nerve fiber density. Three months after PRK is actually most significantly than the control Y. And although numerically these nerves are not different from a control cornea, the, the nerve distribution is still distinct from an unwounded cornea. Thus, the anterior stroma is the layer that contributes most significantly to the absence of difference by compensating the small absent area free of intraepithelial inter nerves. And observe after the third month, the distinguished, the distinguished nerve distribution three months after a PRK compared to a control cornea. And after six months, it is possible to see a better nerve distribution over the corneal layers, but a persistent area free of intraepithelial nerves. However, a more regular distribution at the level of anterior stroma and the medial stroma. In a more detailed way, observe the lack of intraepithelial nerves. And although numerically there is no more significant difference on the central corneal nerve area at the third month following PRK compared to a control cornea, the neural remodeling process is not finished up to six months. We believe that there are many, that there are many cellular interactions involving the corneal wound healing response and the neural regeneration process, like this recent evidence demonstrating that the myofibroblast might negatively impact the neurite outgrowth by inhibiting stromal nerves from repopulate the intraepithelial fibers. That's a, an important information that helps us to understand the neuroregeneration behavior following PRK and also help us to guide for future directions. Thank you very much. <laughs>